What's going on guys, Tyler here, and today we are talking about overlapping columns in Elementor. Now, I do wanna give a shout out to, I believe you pronounce the channel, Ooh Boy, um, here on YouTube. I do wanna give a shout out to their channel for putting out a video, um, a similar video tutorial about this. Theirs was way more in depth on, you know, different methods that they tried that didn't work and reasons that they didn't work and everything like that. So if you're interested in that, or maybe after today's video, you have some questions Questions, be sure and check out their video. I will go ahead and link it down below in the description if you're interested in that. So thank you, ooh boy, for your in-depth tutorial there. But in this video, I'm going to be moving very quickly and going through the steps really rapidly. So if you're get stuck or kind of get behind, be sure and just pause this video, catch up, get all the steps done, and then uh, you can move on to the future step. And as always, guys, be sure and smash that nice red look and subscribe button. If you haven't already, join the fam, be a part of the subscriber fam. And I do have some pretty awesome videos coming up that I have planned, so be sure and hit that nice red look and subscribe button so you can be notified of future videos just like this one. And of course, Elementor Pro is just an incredible plugin. If you haven't upgraded yet, I, be, I highly, highly recommend you do upgrade, so be sure and check out that link down below in the description. It's just a phenomenal plugin gives your website so many awesome features, um, graphical features, visual features, functionality features, all kinds of different features, and it's really at a great price. So be sure and check out that link down below in the description, and let's go ahead and jump over to my computer. All right, guys, so let's take a look here at what an example of some overlapping columns looks like in Elementor. Now, this is a really cool effect. You kind of get this whole uh, like effect of this column right here being put over top of this image column and you can see the image behind it and it looks like this one is here placed in front of it now it's not really truly an overlapping columns of as you would think of when you're building with elementor it's a little bit different and i'm just going to jump right in and show you how this works but um, one thing I do want to mention before we jump in is the images are going to be very important. You want to use an image that puts the subject or the focus of whatever you're trying to display in that image. For example, this person right here, you want that to be in the opposite third of wherever you're putting your content box. So for example, in this image, this full image extends all the way out over to here. You can't see it right at the moment, but it extends all the way over behind this like kind of light brown box here. Um, but the third that I have the subject in is on the far right. So the subject is actually in the far right. And I strategically did that. I strategically used this image because I want the subject to be on the right side and the content to be on the left side. Now you still want the image to look decent because in the mobile version, we won't be able to get the same exact effect and they'll see the whole image. So you want the image to look good and presentable on its own, but you want to make sure that your subject is on the third opposite of your content. So if you were to flip this, if you wanted your content on the other side here, so the content was over here on this side, and you have your image on this side over here, then you would want to put your subject in that third. If you have any kind of issues with this, you might may be able to just flip your image um, or flip it horizontally. That's sometimes an option. That's actually what I ended up doing with this image right here and it worked really nicely. All right, so once you have your image in the right third and you're ready to go with your perfect image, then we can go ahead and get started here. So the first things first, I'm here in the editor here. You'll wanna go back here in the editor and let me actually just remove this for right now. All right, so as you can probably see already, we have an image, but the image is actually in the background. There's nothing here in this right column here and we have all our content in this left column here. So let me show you how this actually works and it's easiest to understand if you pull up the navigator. And if you go over here to the bottom left side, you can see here, you click that little navigator, it'll bring up this little hierarchy menu to show you kind of where everything stacks. It's similar to like layers and Photoshop or anything like that. Um, it shows you kind of how everything stacks in place here. So we have this section. This is gonna be our main section as you can see right here. Um, we have that section and then within that we have a column right here, the main column. And then within that we have an inner section. Now this is gonna be key to be, to be able to create this is you're gonna wanna use this inner section element. And to get to that, you just go right over here and drag in and drop a intersection element. And uh, we can just actually go ahead and duplicate this so I can show you how this works here. 
but basically what we're gonna do is this intersection, we can get rid of that. So we have one column right here, one section right here, we'll just drag in an intersection right here, and there we go. We've basically created two columns within one column. Now, if you're confused already, um, check out my other video about intersections. This is what it looks like right here. You can go ahead and kind of learn a little bit more about intersections, but if not, if you understand intersections or if you're just wanting to follow along, just stick with me. It'll all make sense here in a little bit, um, but basically we'll need to drag that in to use that intersections uh, element. All right, great. Now that we've got the intersections element in here, we're ready to start building out that column overlap effect. For the first example, we'll build out all of our content here on the left. And basically what I'm gonna do is actually click here on the column and go over to style. And then we're gonna go to background type and we're going to go to classic to make it a color here. We'll go to color here and select the color that works best for us. We can also use global colors just right here if we've set those up. Again, I have videos on these. Here's an example of one of those videos if you're interested in checking that out. But we can go ahead and just set up a background color for our content and pick the color just like that. And then we just go ahead and begin building our content just like we normally would. We drag in a title here. We drag in a text editor right here, and then we'll drag in a button down below. Now for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not gonna go through and actually show all this stuff. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the content I've already built out. Voila, that was nice and quick. All right, we've got the content built out here and we're all set to go. Now one thing you may need to adjust is when you're building out your content, you click on your column, you may want to adjust the padding here. That will kind of give this kind of uh, margin, or the spacing, not margin, excuse me, this like spacing around the edge of the, uh, border of the content. So here it, I have my padding set to 40 in case that's any kind of reference for you guys. But set this all up so it looks nice and you're all ready to go and then we'll get started on the image. All right, now the image is actually not that tricky. What we're gonna do is we're actually going to set it as the background of our main content container. So right here on this single column, not in the intersections anymore, we're on the single column, the main content container. So for reference, that's this section right here um, you can go ahead and click that and we're gonna go to style and we're going to go to background type and we'll hit classic and we'll set our image to the image that we want to use all right you can kind of see things are starting to take shape here what we want to do now is in this same section in these settings now that we've selected our image we want to go ahead and hit size and hit cover that's going to change the size and fit it into the width of the container that it's in. We want it to be set to cover and the repeat to be set to no repeat so it's not repeating down below or off to the side or anything like that. And then we're gonna want to set the position to center right. Now this is going to set it center vertically and over to the right horizontally. Now, just like that, you can kind of see it kind of moved everything and it probably doesn't really matter. You could probably also set it center center. It does seem to work like that, but for this tutorial, we're just gonna set to center right. And uh, yeah, there we go. Once you have that all set up, this is kind of what it should look like right here. Now you can see here, we do have a little bit of a, a border up here where you can see the image and a little bit down here. So we wanna make that even and we wanna make it on both sides a nice, thick border so you can really see the image behind this content um, box right here. So we're gonna go back to the same section settings and we're gonna go over to advanced and we're going to change the padding. Now we're going to unlink the values by clicking this little link and we're going to add a top to, let's just say 50 and the bottom to 50. That should give it a nice healthy chunk above and below there. And uh, yeah, that's looking pretty good, just like that. Now what we're gonna do to go ahead and kinda cut this image off, as you can see here, you, we actually cut this image off right here, is we're actually gonna simulate it cut it being cut off. We're not actually going to hide or, or destroy the image or change the image at all. We're actually just gonna hide it behind what's called a gradient. Now a gradient is something, uh, one color that kind of like fades to another color. Or for example, in this example, it would be one color that kind of fades over to the image. Now what we're gonna do is when you reduce that fade all the way down to where it's just one line, it makes a hard line just like this. So now let's just go ahead and do it. It's just easier explained here. So 
So when we go back into section, again, we're in the main section here where we have our image. We'll go back over to style and we have our image right over here. We wanna go down to background overlay. Now, once we click this, we have the option to do a classic, like a color or a gradient. We're gonna to wanna to use gradient here. And we're gonna go ahead and set the color right here to whatever the color of your background is. So mine is white here, you can see clearly it's it's just a typical white background, but if you had you know a black background website, then you'll wanna set it to black just like that. But let's go ahead and just set it over here to white. And uh, yeah, we want the opacity to be all the way up there on it. And uh, we are pretty much all set here. Now, um, what we wanna do is set this location to, let's just say 30 for right now. And then we want to set this secondary color. We want to set it to completely transparent because we don't want another color. We just want it to fade to the image. Again, if it's, this isn't making a ton of sense, don't worry, just keep following along. It'll all work out here in a minute. So basically what we can do is just drag this little opacity ticker and drag it all the way down to the bottom. So now it's basically just transparent. It's a white fading to transparency. So now that we have that set, we're good to go. We can change this location all the way down to zero. Now what that did is you can kind of see this hard line. I don't know if you can see here in the video, but where my mouse is, you can see this hard white line here that it's now created. Now we need to change the angle. So it's actually sitting up and down. We wanna change the angle to 90 degrees. That will move it over to left and right now. So you can see right here, we have this nice hard line right there. And if we move the first location slider, so the one that we set to 30, if we move this, we can actually move that hard line and set it wherever we want. Okay, so now let's keep it yeah 25 30 somewhere in there looks pretty good we'll just leave it at 30 for this example um, and then the opacity we're going to want to actually bring it all the way up now this is different from the opacity on the first color we selected this is the opacity right here we'll want to bring it all the way up and as we bring it up you can see it completely blocks out the image and just shows our white gradient that we've created if you bring it down you can see it kind of like shows more of the image but let's bring it all the way up and it creates that effect of this image being cut off even though it's not it creates this effect that it is cut off and when we actually take a look at that on the page it looks like we've now got these two columns that are overlapped all right, awesome. So we've got the effect going right there. Let's just make sure it works on tablet. So we can go over here to responsive mode and switch to tablet and take a look. And yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, we might wanna adjust some of the content here to make it fit a little bit better. Um, and you could go ahead and do that by hitting edit here and going over to style and typography. And if you're gonna adjust the size right here, you could actually set this to tablet and then set the size for it. And that would apply specific size settings only to tablet. Again, this is probably stuff for another video, so we're not gonna worry about that right now. I'm just gonna leave it how it is default. But I wanted to show you that that is possible that you can adjust anything and set the setting specific to tablet. So let's go back to desktop and we are here and everything looks really nicely, right? The only issue is, is when we switch over to mobile, we get this really weird effect. We can't see the image. Things are just kind of in the way and things like that. So we got to get rid of that background image and add it in a different way. So what we're going to do is go back to desktop here. We're going to go ahead and drag in a new image here. And basically what we're going to do is put it in this secondary column that we had nothing there. And we're going to choose the same exact image. All right, so I've got this image inserted right here on our secondary column. And then what we're gonna wanna do is go over here under the image settings here, under image size, we'll set this to full. So now we've got that image there and it's placed, it's ready to go. What we need to do now is disable it on desktop and tablet because we don't wanna see it on desktop and tablet. So we'll go over here to edit and we will go to advanced and we will go over to responsive here and we'll just hit hide on desktop, hide on tablet. Now what this is gonna do is it's actually gonna stack the columns and you know this is aside from hiding on desktop and tablet. When we're in the mobile view, you'll actually see this is stacking the two columns. So you can see our image is now down here and our content box is up above. 
but really we want the image up above and the content box down below. So what we're gonna do here to, to change that is go back to the desktop view. So we're gonna go over here to this section right here. This is the intersection now. We're editing the intersection settings. We'll go over here to uh, advanced and we'll hit responsive and we can reverse columns on mobile. We'll hit that and now you'll see when we switch to mobile view, the image is now up top and the content box is down below. That's awesome, that looks great, except that we have that background image still there. So we'll go back to desktop, and what we're gonna do is actually edit this section. Again, this is the main section here where we have placed our background image, and we'll go over to, let's just go over to size here and switch it over to mobile. Now here we'll go ahead and hit custom size, and we'll just set this size to zero. That's gonna basically set the size of the background image to zero when it's on mobile. So now if we take a look at how this looks, we can actually see here, this is now our desktop version of the site here of this effect. And if we look at the tablet version, we can see here, this is the tablet version of this effect here. And lastly, let's take a look at mobile. This is the mobile version of the effect right here. And again, like I said, you can adjust all of these settings. You can fit them, you know, make the setting adjustments on the text specific for mobile. You can make adjustments if you wanted to adjust this image so it fit all the way through the columns and everything like that. If you needed to make any kind of other adjustments, you could do that by selecting mobile here and then changing any kind of settings on there. So that is just how easy it is to make this look of overlapping columns in Elementor. Again, it's not a feature that they've natively built in, but you can definitely replicate it with all of these settings here. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys have any questions, be sure and drop a comment down below in the comment section um, below this video here. And again, a big shout out to Ooh Boy for a tutorial similar to this. The link is down below in the description if you want to see that, if you have any other questions you might be able to find answers on that video there. And last but not least is subscribe to the YouTube channel. I would really appreciate it. It's a nice red looking subscribe button. You just gotta tap it and uh, make sure you are subscribed. And of course you can get Elementor Pro at a great price. Check out the link down below in the description and see you know what kind of price you can get for it because it really is just a phenomenal plugin with so many features. As you saw here, the, the you know, abilities and the possibilities are just endless with Elementor and Elementor Pro. So be sure and check that out in the description and we'll catch you guys on the next video. Take care.